So I'm going to write steps. So first, deprotonate the, what was this? This was the... The original the, nucleophile. The original nucleophile. And then we protonated this leaving group. Leaving group, of course. And that all makes sense for my chemistry. However, this is usually not the way you would see it uh, in the answer key, even though this would be full credit because there's an allowable shortcut. So I guess once you have this new notes, we can see what the shortcut is that's actually usually used in the answer key. Notice that overall, all that's really happened here is this proton left the nucleophile and traveled onto the leaving group. All that we're really doing here is taking the proton off of the nucleophile and putting it on the leaving group. The chloride here is just acting like a middleman. Right? The chloride is just taking the proton off of here and putting it back here. So um, even though this is accurate, it's an allowable shortcut to show this directly taking the hydrogen. And that's what usually would be done in lecture and in class, because people get uh, tired of just showing this middleman all the time. So we can use the lone pairs on that oxygen? Right. So in a second, I'm going to erase this and replace it with the, uh, the other approach. So you have this in your notes. This is what really happens. What really happens usually is that um, somebody in the solvent or this uh, chloride takes the hydrogen and then donates it to this over here. But as an allowable shortcut, it's much simpler just to think that the oxygen takes the hydrogen directly. Um, this is what's called a proton transfer. Um, so internal proton. that's right. Yeah, an internal proton transfer. So the way we would write that is just like this. We can just have this. We just move the proton from this oxygen to this oxygen. The, hydro, the proton here is not serving any purpose on this oxygen because we don't want this to leave. But this oxygen could use a proton because this is the one that we know will leave. And that'll just get us straight to here. That just gives us one less step that we have to draw. Even though that's probably a little less accurate in the actual solution, this is what actually everyone actually ends up doing when they solve problems, just showing a one-step proton transfer. So we might as well get into the same habit ourselves. So I can erase this intermediate. And we would go straight to here. Okay, all right, so those are two uh, allowable ways to get to this over here. What have we done so far? Uh, remember, there's two, uh, so far, the main reaction we've done is attacking the carbonyl, and we've just festooned that with some protonations and deprotonations. There's an O there, right? Did, Did I make, make a mistake? mistake? What am I doing? Oh, yeah, okay. that was a mistake. So I'm like, where is that? Okay, okay. Uh, if that makes sense so far, what would we do now? All right, now that this is a great leaving group would be a good time. Remember that we all along we wanted to reform the carbonyl. All along we've been wanting to reform the carbonyl here. Uh, so before I forget, let me point out a classic student mistake here. A classic student mistake here is to take the proton off of here and protonate this oxygen yeah. and turn this into the leaving group. Because well, we did do that before. With like exactly. Exactly. You can see how people make that mistake. So when we take the proton off of here, we can put it either on this oxygen or this oxygen. Well, this is the right place. But a lot of students end up putting the proton over here. Um, why is that? Does not, why do we not want to do that here? Because we know we want to reform the carbonyl. And that would take us further from having this be a carbonyl. But why is that so tempting? Well, just like you said, because back when we were doing aldehydes and ketones, we, d we would protonate this. Because remember, if we got into this category, the, oxygen le the carbonyl oxygen had left as water. But remember, the carbonyl oxygen is not going to leave here. That's why I think it's such a good idea to keep asterisking the carbonyl oxygen. So you keep in mind, this is going to reform a carbonyl over here. I should not turn this into a leaving group and have it leave. Yeah. Um, in this case, we want to reform the carbonyl. So that's the purpose of these asterisks on the carbonyl oxygens here. Because when you're in the middle of a reaction, it's, it's easy to get confused and not know where the heck to put the proton. OK, so, uh, so you guys were right. We're not, uh, we just want to reform the carbonyl here. OK, so then we can show uh, the product. Um, that step. So these would be those products. And then what would we do? Deprotonate. Yeah. And now, again, we can use the chloride that we produced in the first step to deprotonate this. So. This, and that shows that this really is just an acid catalyzed reaction because we're regenerating the catalyst at the last step. So this is just 
from ethyl group. Actually, one thing that would have saved me a lot of time here is it's a good habit to get into just to write ethyl and methyl for these groups. That way we don't have to keep doing so much writing. So I should have just said this is an ethyl group down here, and we've regenerated our acid catalyst. All right, so this is definitely one of the crucial reactions to be comfortable with um, here. All right, so uh, here's the final uh, product that we get at this point. So to review um, the key steps, what, what functional groups did we start with here? In the original starting materials. This is an ester, that's right. And who attacked the ester? What type of functional group attacked the ester? It's actually really important to know what type of functional group this is. Well, what, yeah, and what type of functional group is that? An alcohol. an alcohol. That's right. Yeah, maybe you guys might want to make a flashcard. It's not too late um, to really know that when you have an ROH group, that's an alcohol. Um, the alcohols are still going to be crucial functional groups for the rest of the course here. Um, an OH attached to a normal carbon is an alcohol. An OH attached to a normal, a normal, normal carbon with no other interesting function. Boring, groups. you yeah. can't call it Yeah, boring. so for example, This is not an alcohol. Right. This is not an alcohol because exactly. this is not a boring carbon. This is a carbonyl carbon. But if this was a boring, ordinary carbon, I don't know what the best word for it is, then it would be an alcohol. So this is not an alcohol, but this is, basically. All right, so um, we have here an ester plus an alcohol. And what type of functional groups did we produce? An ester and alcohol. Yeah, we produced uh, an ester and an alcohol. Does that mean we didn't do anything? Well, we have a different ester. Right? Here there was a methyl group on the oxygen, and here there's an ethyl group on the oxygen. And here the alcohol was ethanol, but here the alcohol is methanol. We produced an ester and an alcohol. Okay. Here's the alcohol that we produced. That was the, the leaving group, right? That we produced an alcohol from that leaving group. Remember that whole hullabaloo we had about protonating the leaving group before it would leave. And that's what gave it the hydrogen that makes this into an alcohol over here. An ester and an alcohol. And we started with an ester and an alcohol. They're just different. Yeah, uh, they're different esters and alcohols. It's transesterification. There you go, that's right. So oh. the official name for this would be transesterification, and that should be a very logical name. Transesterification just means, I don't know, trans means uh, translating one ester into a different ester. So here we're just taking one ester and turning it into a different ester. We started with an ester with a methyl group on the oxygen, and we produced an ester with an ethyl group on the oxygen. Okay, uh, so that gives us that. All right, so that's transesterification. But less important than the name is just seeing how this falls into the same categories we've seen before. It might not seem the same, though, because we have all these protonations and deprotonations. Uh, that's the thing that was making things confusing. So yeah, we should probably uh, summarize that here. So 